church, let's all stand on our feet for worship tonight. How many of you know that we serve a mighty God? Amen. We serve a mighty God. Come on, put your hands together and give God a great shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
future is all under the blood. Hallelujah. He said it is finished. He said it is finished. Hallelujah. Come on, can you clap your hands? I'm not waiting for the chains to break. I'm not waiting for the prison to open. I am free by the wonder of the cross. Jesus did it. It is finished. And I'm not waiting for a mountain to move. I'm not waiting for addiction to lose. I am free by the power of the cross. Jesus did it. It is finished. Sing. When Christ got up, I got up to you. Hell lost its win. Hell has you. I said yes to I Jesus. Yes to Jesus. And everything changed. Jesus did it. I'm not waiting for the fear to leave I'm not waiting for depression to flee I am whole by the wonder of the cross Jesus did it, it is finished I'm not waiting for the sea to part I'm not waiting for my healing to start I am whole by the power of the cross Jesus did it, it is finished See when Christ got up, I got up Hell lost its grip Hell lost its grip Hell lost its grip I say yes to Jesus I say yes to Jesus And everything changed Jesus did it In his minute Oh, when Christ got up
to save you, to heal you, to deliver, hallelujah, for the rest of eternity, you never have to be crucified again, they'll never put a crown of thorns on his head again, thank you Jesus, Lord God, for that sacrifice that you made on Calvary, Jesus, we bless your name, God. Your blood is a rescue to the sin stained life. Your blood is healing to the hopeless and broken. Your blood is enough. Do you believe that tonight? Jesus is enough. Your blood is a shelter. In the middle of my storm, your blood is my refuge when I'm hurting and alone. Your blood is enough. Oh, yes, it is. Jesus is enough. This is what his blood does tonight. It's renewing. It's renewing, restoring, saving. It is life everlasting to all who receive your love. Hallelujah, it's more than enough tonight. Thank you, Jesus. It's more than enough. Can you tell them that? It's more than enough, Jesus. It's more than enough. Sing that first verse. Your blood is a rescue to the sin stained life. Your blood is healing to the hopeless and broken. Your blood is enough. Oh, yes, it is, Jesus. It's Jesus is enough. It's all. It's enough, Lord. It's enough, Jesus. Your blood is a shelter. Your blood is a shelter. In the middle of my storm, your blood is my refuge. When I'm hurting and alone, your blood is enough. Oh, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Come on and testify. Hallelujah, what this blood does for you. It's
Tell him his sacrifice was enough tonight. It's more than enough for all eternity. It's more than enough. It's more than enough. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He will never lose power. Oh, the blood that Jesus 
Jesus shed for me all the way, way back on Calvary. I know that it is the blood that gives me my strength from talk more about the blood. You see, you see it soothes all of my doubts. It calms all of my fears. And that same blood goes ahead and dries all, all of my tears. Oh, I know that it is the blood that gives me my stop there because it was a Friday when Jesus was on the cross Saturday came along they didn't know what to do but there's a Sunday that comes now I read this this morning but I'm going to go a little further now after the Sabbath Toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Sunday, someone say Sunday. Sunday. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see, to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great 
earthquake. When God is in the place, things begin to move. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. Aren't you glad that God comes down and rolls back the stone? And the angel sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the, angel, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. He's risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going to go before you in Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. Today is a day of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. So there they will see me. Aren't you glad that we have a promise that we will see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Today is a day of worshiping and magnifying the King of Kings who paid the price on Calvary, went to death, went to hell, brought back the keys to the grave. And I'm grateful today that he is resurrected today and he is living. He is living well today. We serve a risen Savior who deserves a risen Savior praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Be seated in God's house. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Just a week before they were saying, Hosanna, God save us, only you can save us. Then the week, just a week later, all of a sudden he begins to bring his salvation to the house of God. I'm so grateful for that. And when Jesus got out of that tomb, that means that he conquered all. There is nothing that the enemy can bring against you that God has not already defeated. The worst thing he can bring before you is an early ticket to heaven. I'm not for sure if that's a bad thing or not. I'm telling you what, we have our assurance in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the victory in Jesus. Is there any praise in the house that we have the victory? Is there a praise in the house that we have the victory? Come on, I'm a high school math teacher. I go to a lot of games. I like to see which side has the victory. Who's got the victory in the house today? Who is on the side of the Lord? Who's got the victory in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Community Family Church. We're so grateful to be here. For the fourth time, these doors have been open, welcoming the people of God into his house to glorify his name. The Bible says, come magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. There's something powerful when we join together and celebrate his great and mighty name. Can I hear an amen in God's house? And amen, absolutely. So grateful that you're with us. If it's your first time here to Community Family Church, we welcome you. We would love the opportunity to connect with you. So if you would reach in the seat in front of you, get a connection card, fill that out for us. And when it comes time for our offering, we'd like you to take that connection card, drop it off one of our offering stands here at the front, the back, the balcony, or if you see one of our friendly staff members or volunteers, you can hand that to one of them. Can we let our guests know how greatly we appreciate them being with us in God's house? We were here on Good Friday, and we had guests at our Good Friday gathering we had here this past Friday. We had communion and prayer meeting, and just guests all day long. I was telling some people today, I just wish I'd see everybody like this every week. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be wonderful? I love to see the people getting together and worshiping the King. The Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We might as well start it here on this earth, amen? 
Might as well start it here on this earth. So if you came this morning, if you're watching online, you came this morning or you're here tonight, come again next week. We're here to bless the name of Jesus. There's only one celebrity in the house. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. We give him all honor, all glory. We, un we, we uphold his word as truth. And we're just here to celebrate his great name. Amen. So first time guests, we're glad you're here, but also want to let you know too that for everyone, we would love for you to take the journey. That is our experience here at Community Family Church, where you get to know about where we've been, where we are now, where we're headed. I know that God is taking us great and mighty places. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be opening all these doors that we're seeing opening. And we're grateful that God is taking us through a season of open doors to walk forward. And I'm grateful to see what he's doing. How many is excited to see what he's doing with our new sanctuary, new things? things happening. Amen. And it's a blessing to be a part of this church. You know, this morning I was walking through and I found some wrappers on the ground. I picked them up and I put them in the trash. You know why? Because I love this place. You'll find out the people who love this place are the people who pray for it, are the people who don't speak negatively about it. The people who, who, who bring things to Jesus, who decide to, to listen twice as much as they speak. Those are the people who love the house of the Lord. And I'm grateful that I know that you love the house of the Lord. And it's just grateful to celebrate Jesus with you. We get to do this in heaven, but what a wonderful thing that we get to do this on earth as well. So the journey is the place for you to so know more about where God is doing, what he's doing in our church, what he's doing in the midst, and how you can get connected. So text the word journey to 859-359-3997 or go to CFC. KY.com and click on the icon for the journey. You can find more about all the opportunities, but we're expecting in the month of April to have so many people be a part of the journey and be more connected to the body of Christ. So make sure you do that today. Let's say our offering declaration of faith together. As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing the Lord for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Say it loud with me. We are blessed and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you hear an amen in God's house? Is anybody like me? It's a joy to give into the house of God. Do you love that? Do you count it as a privilege to give? Do you feel like when you bring in your tithes and offerings, do you feel like you're making a difference for the kingdom of God? Do you feel like you're obeying the scriptures as you give your tithes and offerings? I feel that in my heart that I, we get to sow into a kingdom. We're storing up treasures in heaven as we begin to give unto the Lord. And it's a joy. I got to look online. There was a way that I can track my giving. And I went to my wife and I asked her, I said, honey, I said, I, I looked online. I got to see how much we've given to the church since we've been married. And I, I saw that number and I couldn't believe it. I said, God, I know how much money I make. And I know it's not a lot. I'm a high school math teacher. I said, I know, but I'm, I saw that number and it almost made me hit the ground. I was so excited. I said to Megan, I said, Megan, how much do you think that we, you and I have given since we've been married? And she tossed out a high number. I said, Megan, it was three times that amount. And I looked at that and I said, God, I am so grateful to be able to sow into the kingdom of God. And you know what? I don't know what happens in the S&P 500. I'm not for sure what's going on, the different IRAs and things like that. But I do know that when I sow into the kingdom of God, it goes in his hands and he takes the little that I have and he multiplies it some way and he uses it for the glory of God. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited that because of your giving, we get to see churches built all across the world and people get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. They're no longer bound by alcohol. They're no longer bound by sin. They're no longer bound by the enemy, but because of the investments that people have made, people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and the heaviness that the enemy brings upon them is gone because the Lord brings it off their shoulders. 
He says, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I challenge you all this week. Be a cheerful giver. Give in that offering and be so excited that you give it. Be so excited that you give it. When you walk around this place, pick up some trash and say, God, I'm so grateful that you allow me to be in this place. In other countries, they're not even allowed to gather to worship your name. But in this country, they allow me to do it. So God, I gratefully pick this up. And I say, God, I give you glory for being my savior, for being my peace, for being my joy, for being my refuge. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength and whom I will trust. My buckler, the horn of my salvation my high tower. Guys, I'm not saying anything out of my mind. I'm saying straight from the scripture today. The Lord is our rock. Amen. I'll stop. I'll get off the microphone. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity to come into your house for the fourth time. Thank you, Lord. We're humbled today. You're a mighty savior. Lord, we didn't do you a favor by coming to church today. Lord, it's our privilege to be in your house. Lord, it's our privilege to be in your house. Lord, this is your house where you are glorified. Many cultures coming together, Lord, to worship your name all across the world. And we get to do that. And we are grateful. We are honored. Lord, move upon this offering. Meet every need, God. We ask that you meet every need, Lord. And with every dollar that is given, let it represent a soul that is one for your kingdom. We give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. amen. Please stand with me. And you may give it this time. church family tonight. Woo! It's called Nadie Como Tu. In Spanish, that means there is none like you. Come on, there's no one like our God. We serve the risen Savior. Can you clap your hands?
Esta noche estar en la casa de Dios con mis hermanos, mis hermanos en Cristo. ¿Quién vive? Cristo. Ah, 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 ah. Sí, Move around, find you. That was Spanish, not the unknown tongue. Turn around and find somebody you know, somebody you don't know, somebody you're wondering who they are. If you don't shake hands, at least introduce yourself. Smile real big. Say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're giving God great praise. We did not mention the new partners this week, and we did not mention those new families that were on board because we had such a busy morning. I'm telling you, all service the first two were absolutely jam-packed and the third one was full and here we are on the fourth service and got a big crowd in here tonight and several thousand are on the internet and I was thinking the last Sunday of the month now if you're here for the first time this is our united group that was leading the singing tonight and that's our college and career hallelujah And you know, we are going to do this. This is not a trial. It's not something that we're just trying to see how it works. So I was thinking, I thought so many churches do not have church on Sunday night. We ought to send an invitation to them, tell them to bring their, we're not trying to steal their young people. Praise God, we don't want to do that. There's lost people. That's who we're going after. But I think it's good for young people to come together in the house of God with some of us gray hairs that are here and able to make it and some that only their hairdresser knows for sure, and for us to be here in the presence of the Lord. And I would like to see this last Sunday of the month become like that youth conference. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. With standing room only. Somebody said, well, what about us old timers? Well, I'm gonna tell you old timers, you get it the first Sunday of the month. And uh, I've got, I was thinking about it, I was with Ronnie Henson, 
Uh, he's the songwriter of the Hensons that wrote uh, The Lighthouse. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, the first Sunday of the month, we need to have, on one of those Sunday nights, we need to have Henson Sunday and sing all Henson songs that night. Bring Ronnie Henson in here. Get my sister Vicky up here singing that. Won't that be a hallelujah meeting when we get to the other side? Hallelujah. And all of those good Henson songs that were written. And then I thought, well, if we're going to have a Henson night, we might as well have a Dottie Rambo night. And if we're going to have a Dottie Rambo night, we might as well have an Andre Crouch night. And if we're going to have an Andre Crouch night, we may as well have a James Cleveland night. Glory to God. I mean, there's so much to do. We don't know what to do. There's so much to do. I feel sorry for people who don't know what to do in the kingdom of God. Oh, the harvest is ripe. It's ready. We've had a wonderful day today, an incredible day. And I know many of you are asking about my mother. Uh, she was, her and dad got ready for church and he was getting ready to go and she said, I don't feel good. And she sat down. What happens is her heart rate takes an immediate drop. And when it takes this immediate drop, they know what to do to fix it. That's put a pacemaker in. They've known this since January. For some strange reason, they was waiting till the end of May for an appointment. And it happened again, and she gets nauseated. And so uh, my sister Vicky, she went over to the house, and they well, called the ambulance and, and got her over there to the hospital. We knew nothing was going to happen. It's Easter Sunday. I mean... Uh, we know we live in Kentucky. Let's just leave it at that. And, uh, but anyway, it was wonderful because when I announced the prayer request, the doctor that's her heart doctor, one of his employees that works for him on a personal basis was here in the service and sent a text message to him. Janice Bates's heart went down again and she needs that pacemaker. And so he called the hospital. He said, do what you need to do. Make sure her blood pressure's right. Send her home. And he said, I'm going to put that in next week. So the job got done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're giving God praise for that. Well, you know, Mom wouldn't miss a, bit, a good meal for anything. I said, Mom, that's how you know you're not going anywhere yet. I said, people don't leave this world eating a steak. It just don't happen. But... Uh, you know, we had our, our, this wasn't our normal Sunday dinner. My wife cooks for our family every Sunday, an incredible meal. But this is the one where she has everybody, my sisters, their husbands, my, my nieces and nephews, everyone's there, or nieces. My, everyone is there with us. So we have a big, big time. And, and you went around and there was a honey baked ham here, roast beef there. We made uh, collard greens and kale. Oh my goodness, was it out of this world? Absolutely hillbilly appellation. And then we, it went from there to, ma she always makes mashed potatoes for the kids and macaroni and cheese because that's what kids eat nowadays. I think they need to stick with the kale and the collard greens, but that's granny and I can't do nothing with her. So let's go on. So she makes macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes. She had carrots. She had uh, fried apples, had fried corn, had uh, Megan brought uh, fried cabbage over. My sister Vicki brought a seven layer salad. There was ooey gooey cake. There was chocolate cake. There was Lord have mercy. What's going on? Who? Oh, up there. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So when mom got home from the hospital, she immediately called and she said, oh, that food was delicious. I said, you ate it? She said, yeah, they sent me home and I couldn't wait to get in it. She said, I said, what all did you eat? She said, they have all of it. I had a taste of all of it. So we're just thankful that the Lord has touched her and God made provision right during a prayer request. I think I can preach angels watching over me another night. I preached that last Sunday night. Angels watching over me. And we're giving God thanks because I've on my journeys, I've been getting Pentecostal handshakes and that's where they put money in your hand. And uh, I got them while I was down in, in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
and I, you know, you, you don't want anybody to look at you, so after they shake your hand, you sort of go like that, and there was one for 100, 150, and there's one for 300, there's one for 1,000, there's one for 1,000, there's one for 1,000. Church was getting ready to start, and another man came up. They tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around. He said, I want to give this to you, and I took it, and I, you know, I, I didn't look at it. I said, oh, thank you, bless you, bless you, and I, get, I got ready to put it in my pocket, and then the, the spirit of inquisitiveness came upon me and said maybe you got another thousand I thought maybe we did hallelujah so I reached down there and I sort of glanced and I went whoa whoa at first I thought it said 250 then 2500 no it said 25,000 I said hallelujah well drop it two notes well I don't know how he'll build it but he will I said, I don't know how he'll build it, but he will. Yes, he will. God knows. Oh, Lord, I'm sure if the angels were taking inventory today, don't tell the fire marshal. You can tell if you want to because it's already over. I'm telling you, there wasn't this morning. There was only one, not even an aisle, just a path, just a path to get up here at front. Hallelujah. God knows that we need it. Believe it and receive it. I don't know how he'll build it, but he will. Yes, he will. Woo. So then tonight, then after church was over, another widow handed me an envelope stuffed, stuffed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Looks like $100 bills, so that's going in there. Looks like $1,000 worth. Then somebody else handed me another $100 bill, then another one handed me another $100 bill, and another one handed me, oh, this is from the Latino church. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm supposed to say their name or not, but we thank the Husto family <laughs> from the Latino church, 1000 Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we need it. We need it desperately. I was over there walking on the footers. I have never seen so much concrete in all of my life. And what people don't understand, if we lived on flat ground, we could probably already have enough concrete to put a slab that you could park on how many cars on. But we live in the hills of Kentucky, which means in the front of that building to the very bottom of the lowest elevation is probably about 45 feet and you just can't build straight out on 45 feet. So there is big footers, the huge footers that are, that are like uh, uh, four feet wide and eight feet deep. And then there's another footer on top of that one. And then there's a pier on top of that one. It is incredible, the concrete that we have already poured under the ground that you don't even see anything. And it's still under the ground. And I'm telling you, we need an answer to prayer. We need an answer to prayer. And I don't know which day we're going to, but on one of these Monday nights, we are going to on prayer night. We're going to meet over here in front of that hole, and we're going to give God prayer. We're going to give God praise, and we're going to believe that those who have the resources to help us, whether it comes in a, a million people giving a hundred dollars, I don't care how it comes, or if it comes with a, a multi-millionaire that says, here's 10 million, finish that building. I don't want to stop in June. I don't want to have another Easter in this house, and I love this house. I don't want to have, I want to be over there. I want to be over there for the next youth conference. We need it. We need to go forward. God's got a great harvest, and I'm telling you, I, I, I do believe this 1230 service is the biggest kept secret in Kenton County. If Kenton County knew that they could get this kind of singing, this kind of service, at a 1230 service for the people that just don't wake up early, they're out there. That's amen. They are out there. And I believe in God because once this church is built, there won't be another 1230 service. And if we do have another one, somebody else will be preaching it. Hallelujah. I've done this for six years. And I know your people are terrified. They're saying, oh, it's wearing you out. It's wearing you out. Hallelujah. I'm not wore out, but I am ready. I'm ready for the new sanctuary. 
And we're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on building. So every day that you get up, if you would just say a prayer, God, fill up that 1230 service. Because when we move in that already, if we, but we could not put all everyone that was here in that sanctuary. It just wouldn't happen. Somebody said, oh, you just go into one service? What kind of vision is that? No. We'll have the 9 o'clock because there's people that get up early. And then we'll have the either 10.45 or 11, probably 11, but I don't know. Some people never, never knew it changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is a great God and greatly to be praised. Let's all stand together. Did you love that Latino singing? I think it's incredible. How many churches have we built in the Amazon for the last 10 years or 15? Almost 200? I was thinking maybe 100. That's in one area on the Amazon River. We have been instrumental. That's only on the Amazon, not counting the almost 400 churches. It's in the Guatemalan uh, Fellowship of El Camino Biblico, the Prince of Peace churches that we've helped in Mexico, the uh, Living Faith that we've helped with Brother Yurton. My, 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 my. The work in Haiti. Oh, my goodness. We provide, what we do is we provide the materials. Of course, they do all the labor. Well, some of it. I'm telling you, it's a wonderful thrill. Let's turn to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 through 22. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 through 22. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Let's read verse 21 together. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for His mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten defeated and they were defeated just for a few moments tonight I know you've had a long day matter of fact when I was driving here we got people all the way in the back wall of the balcony the place is full I thought this poor church they have a holiness preacher that just won't stay home on Sunday night and take a nap I did fall asleep in my chair and bit my tongue and it woke me up. I mean, I, it hurts. I bit it hard. I don't know what kind of dream it was. I don't know what my tongue was doing hanging out. The Bible said it's an unruly member. But uh, I felt sorry for you good holiness people that you got a shepherd that believes in the evening sacrifice and uh, so glad you're here and so thankful second chronicles chapter 20 verses 20 through 22 is our text i'm preaching on a subject the mysterious power of praise let's say that together the mysterious power of praise let's pray father we come to you in the name of jesus let this word be preached with love mercy and compassion let it be preached with demonstration and power of the holy ghost take us god into the depths of the spirit we give you all of the praise and all of the glory 
in the mighty, wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You know what I'm really looking forward to? I'm looking forward in the new sanctuary for our Sunday night service to be actually a tri-state rally. And like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to take other people's congregations. There's too many lost people out there. We knew, what to, we knew what to do when we were growing up. The holiness churches, the churches are very conservative. They all, they were very close. We went to Claude Ely's on Thursday night or on Tuesday night, went to, went to uh, a brother over on Galbraith Road, Brother George Hale. We went to Charity Tabernacle. That was the name of it then on Thursday night. We had youth rallies every Friday night. And out of all of our churches, they had revivals. Somebody was having a revival. And we all loaded up and we went together. We knew where to go when it was our church. We knew to come home. We went for fellowship because we knew that's where we got our strength. We never had anybody while we were there walking up to us and saying, well, what do you do at community? And you say something like, well, I, I just go. Oh, you mean you're not, a, you're not a teacher? No. Well, what are your gifts? Well, I do this. Well, I, well, you know, well, we're glad to have you because we could really utilize your gifts here. All of that is nothing but, uh, it's nothing but sheep stealing. And they do that all the time. Every time we have somebody to go visit a church, that's the first thing they're doing is gnawing on them. Fill this out. Tell us what you're doing. You mean they don't use you there? They don't do this with you there? I'm telling you, if you want to do something for God, the sky's the limit here. I have never held anyone back from ministry in this church. Matter of fact, if you went to knocking on doors and you had enough people to fill up a bus, I would personally, out of Tommy Bates Ministries, if you got us, I'd pay for you to get your CDL. I would pay for a bus. I would buy a bus if you would fill it up and bring it. I am not just throwing out hot air. There is no limit to ministry in this house. There's 113 acres. You can have a prayer meeting in the field you can have the prayer meeting in a room. You can, there is no limit, no restraints of any kind. Now, if you want to get up here and preach on Sunday night, that might not happen. You know, unless it's time for me to leave and they vote you in, then maybe that's what we'll do. But, you know, you, you got to... You got to understand that ministry, before I ever preached here, I was preaching to every house you can imagine. I stood on the hearth of a fireplace and I preached and conviction fell. And sinners that were in the house kneeled around a coffee table and prayed through to salvation. I went to nursing homes. I went to the elderly, carried my guitar every, not just, not just one or tw twice a year. We're talking about every week. My wife and I knocked on probably every door on Hands Road at one time, filling up buses for the bus ministry. There is not enough people to work in the kingdom of God. And if all you see is a production type ministry, a performance type ministry, you're missing it. There, the ministry is souls coming into the kingdom of God. And that's what we have to come together. So just for a few moments, and like I said, I would love to see that new sanctuary on Sunday night. I'd love to see all churches coming together. It'll be coming together on our terms. There won't be no secular music ever played at this church before church. Ever. Ever. This property doesn't belong to John Denver. It doesn't belong to the Eagles. It doesn't belong to the Rolling Stones. It doesn't belong to the secular K-102 or no, whatever. What is that? Whatever that station, not K-102, K-405 or something. Whatever it is, that, that rock station over there. 
This property does not belong to the rock station. It doesn't belong to what made Milwaukee famous. It's not for, for, it's not for the hoot nannies uh, over there. It's not for anything like that. This belongs to the kingdom of God. Not part of it. Every part of it. Every fellowship. I know I've had people bellyache, and I'll get this all to my system evidently. I don't know why it's coming out. But I've had people try to sneak their champagne bottles in here at a wedding. I said, no, it's not going to happen. Well, can't we just sit them on the table? We won't drink it. I said, I don't like the looks of it. I don't even want to see it. I I'm preaching people off of that stuff. I'm believing God to get people off of that stuff. I don't want it here. I don't want anything about it. The reason why you have to have a... Uh, the reason why you have to have a type of drug that's a personality altering drug is because you haven't found true joy in Jesus. I'm getting ready to have I'm getting ready to have my 50th reunion. I'm 68 years old, 18 when I graduated. And I'm going to go to that reunion. Now the last one I was at just a few years ago we all look different. We have to get the annual out and ask people questions. Who's that over there? Who's that over there? But eventually, before the night's over, we know who they are. But I've been there. The first time I had this experience, I said, wow, is this ever weird? Men coming up and talking to me with a different voice like, hey, Tom, how's it going with your parishioners? I'm thinking, okay, I'll go along with it. So it's going just good. You're still preaching? <laughs> yep. Now, now, these are people that I was in gym class with. These are the people that, I mean, I, I know them frontwards and backwards, okay? And it's just like this. And it's like, is this a stranger? Because unaffirmed men become fakes. A man that's never been affirmed is like Jacob. He's all the time putting on a fake voice and fake skin, fake clothes and a fake smell to try to be something he's not. And a woman that's not affirmed is always looking for love. And so she'll play the harlot like Tamar to get somebody to love her. She'll go through five husbands like the woman of Samaria. But when you get affirmed by your God, you can take off the animal skins because there's only one affirmer, and that is God himself. And when you get born again, you get a new father, you get a new family, you get a new creature, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. So I go to the reunion. They're all talking like this with those weird faces like that. <laughs> and they're lying. They start talking about all that they own and how much they make, and most of it's not the truth, and I know it. And we do, and this, and yes. <laughs> they drink one beer, and the face starts turning. They drink two, they drink three. By the time they get a few martinis, that face is gone. By the time they drink quite a bit, their voice comes back. Hey, Tom, you remember when? <laughs> you remember when? They have to have a personality altering drug called alcohol because they're locked up in a cage that they can't get out of. But I found a personality altering power called the power of the new wine the power of the Holy Ghost. And I don't have to wear animal skins. I don't have to put fake smell on me. I'm not looking for affirmation because I know I'm a royal child, been adopted in a royal family, and my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Give God a praise. Just for a few moments tonight, we're dealing with the mysterious power of praise. The children of Israel, Israel, their backs are backed up against the wall. It was so desperate. It was so bad. 
that Jehoshaphat calls everybody to the house of God. Everyone. He calls the mother, the father, the baby. He said, bring your children. Bring them all. Bring the grandma. Bring the grandpa. Everybody come to the house of God. I've only seen that one time in the history of my life. That was at 9-11 on that Tuesday. No one advertised church. No one announced there would be a prayer meeting. But after the second tower had fallen and there was a hole in the Pentagon and it was, it was alarming because they said, we don't know when that the next attack is going to take place. They're going for the major cities. They're going to go to Cincinnati. They'll go to Detroit. They'll go to Atlanta. They'll go to Miami. They'll go to Jacksonville. They'll go to Tampa. They started naming all these cities. We don't know the next one that's going to be under attack. We don't know when this is going to happen. And no one announced it. No one said anything. But on that Tuesday, about 7 o'clock, people started talking, of course. And they said, let's go to church at 7 o'clock. We unlocked the doors somewhere around 6 or 6.30. You could hear the people as they got out of their cars. They were moaning. They were crying. They were going, oh, Lord, help us. The balcony filled up. The choir filled up. Every seat in this house filled up. It looked just like Easter Sunday this morning. It was totally packed. There was no music. There was no singing. There was nothing. Just the sounds of the cries of the people. God, help us. Oh, God, help us. We need help. We don't know where the next attack is coming. There's a hole in our Pentagon. The Twin Towers have fallen. God, there's thousands that are laying under ashes. There are thousands, Lord, that's been killed. This is an attack on the United States of America. We never had such an attack as this. And there was weeping and there was crying. Anytime the people come in unity like that, that's exactly the scenario that happened. Whenever that in the days of Jehoshaphat. Everyone had come to the house of God. It was the end. They were getting ready to face a complete extermination. That was what the plot was. Let's exterminate these people. Let's remove them. Let's get rid of them. And they came to the house of the Lord. And the Spirit of God began to move with a prophetic word. And the prophetic word said, you don't need to fight in this battle. This battle does not belong to you. This battle belongs to the Lord and the prophetic word said stand still and see the salvation of the Lord they all began to thank God they began to weep and the Bible said they fell to the faces and they began to cry out unto the Lord and they began to thank the Lord but still that did not stop the adversary that was on his way that did not stop the multitude that looked like the sands of the sea it did not stop that great mighty multitude that was coming to the children of Israel to totally exterminate them and the word of God gives them direction he said here's what you need to do he says I'm going to appoint you you're going to go in front of the army we don't have enough weaponry to fight this battle you're going to go in front of the army God said God said and if you believe the Lord you shall be established and if you believe that prophetic word that just fell in the temple that said stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That this battle is not yours but this battle belongs to the Lord. If you will believe his prophets then so shall you prosper. And he said here's what I want you to do. I want you to go in front of the enemy. I want you to go before them and I want you that you should praise the beauty of his holiness. That word there is Hallel. There are seven words for praise. The first one is Barak. That is in humility. The second one is Zamar. That's to praise him with musical instruments and the music that you listen to. And then there is Toda. That is to lift up holy hands and to praise God as an act of surrender and an act of praise and victory unto him. And then there is Yada. That is to 
lift up your hands with a song of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then there is Shabbat. That's a loud glorifying tone. Woo! Hallelujah. That's a Shabbat. And then there is Tehillah. And Tehillah is a song praise. And we're going to come back to that one in just a moment. And then there is Hallel. Hallel is a foolish praise. Sometimes it leaps. Sometimes it spins. Sometimes it's like David. It dances before the Lord with all of its might. Sometimes Hallel will clap its hands and shout with a voice of triumph. Sometimes Hallel causes you to leap for joy. And I've seen people move under this Hallel praise. It's like sticking your finger in an electric socket. There are some electricians who can test an electric socket and it don't phase them too much because they've gotten used to it. But if my finger goes on an electric socket, you're going to see some wiggling and some squirming and hear a few sounds. It's not just going to be a little stare at the, at the electric socket situation because that's we're all different and we all express different. And I've seen some under Hillel move until their shoulders shake, until their head begins to shake, until their knees begin to bend. I've seen a, a, a Hillel praise jump in one place and run in one place. I've seen a Hillel praise begin to spin in the air. As a matter of fact, when I was at Baton Rouge, they took some pictures of me. I can't believe it's me. And they showed me one. This old man's jumping in the air and I spin in the air and my boots are up like this. And I said, Lord have mercy. Did I do that? And the photographer said, you did more than that. And I got every bit of it. <clears throat> So the instruction came, if you believe the word of God, if you believe the Lord, you will be established. But if you believe that prophecy that just came in the temple, so, so shall you prosper. He said, I want you to go. And the first thing I want you to do is have a Hillel mentality. I'm telling you, sometimes uh, when you're really up against the wall, you got to stir yourself. You listen to me. Sometimes you just got to clap your hands. Uh, that's that song that I wrote. Uh, not that I wrote, that I sang. Uh, that, that clap your hands. Or sometimes uh, you just have to look the adversary in the face uh, and say, if you don't leave me alone, I am going to clap. I'm going to have me a spell. I'm going to shout, I'm going to dance, I'm going to spin. He said, you, the first thing you're going to have to do is talk to your body and give a Hallel praise and say, hands, you don't feel like it, but get them up in the air. He said, mouth, you don't feel like it, but you're going to give a shout. Feet, you don't feel like it, but you're going to march. And you hear me, you're going to spin, you're going to give God praise. He said, it's not based on what you feel, it's based Based on your action of faith. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. And because I know who holds tomorrow, I'm going to speak to my body. I'm going to say, body, wake up. You wake up right now. You give God a praise. You clap your hands. You leap for joy. You give God a shout. Now, if I said Hallel, give God a Hallel. That was a very good Shabbat. But it was about that close to a Hillel. When you say give God a Hillel, you're gonna say, excuse me, I gotta get out of this seat right now. I'm gonna to have to move. That don't mean that God grabs you by the belt and shakes you till your false teeth fall out of your head and your wig falls off and your eyelashes are laying on your cheek. And I saw this united group, I saw jewelry falling on the floor. I said, well, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Look what God has done, look what he's done. And I thought, Brittany, you're gonna smash somebody's, whatever it was. I don't know if it's an earring or a necklace or a ring. I said, that thing is getting ready to get smashed. But she went all the way around it. 
all I can tell you is this. A Hallel, I said a Hallel, is when you take authority over depression. You take authority over that spirit that's got you locked up and got you bound up and got you sitting in fear and saying, I'm just going to wait on the Lord. I'm just going to wait on the Lord. I'm just going to wait on God. I know that God's going to take care of me. If he wants me to praise him, he'll cause me to praise him. Oh, that's you know what Jehoshaphat said? He said, the devil is staring you in the face. The exterminators are looking at you right in the eye. They want to kill you. They want to destroy you. But he said, the first thing you're going to have to do is talk to your physical body and say, physical body, you are not going to come in subjection to this. He said, go out with a Hallel. Now give God a Hallel. I said hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallel is a foolish praise. It's one that makes no sense. You're supposed to give the hallel after the scoreboard says that you've won. You're supposed to give the hallel when you're in the last quarter and all at once the final play is made and the scoreboard says you won. That's when you throw off your hat. That's when you spin your arm around. That's when you twirl around. When you get the report and they said there's no cancer in your body. That's when you're supposed to hallel. When you get to report and your finances have been taken care of. That's when you're supposed to hallel. No, no, no. Not in God's program. It doesn't happen before. It doesn't happen after. But it happens before. Because he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He already won before you fought the battle. He already had the victory before you ever had the trial. He already won the battle before it ever happened. He said you go out. It is a victory praise. I said it's a victory praise that says I don't know how he's going to move. I don't know when he's going to move, but I know he's going to move beyond the shadow of a doubt. God's got this. God's got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, glory. I love it because it says Hallel is the beauty of holiness. Now, Hallel don't look like the Watutsi. I've seen people just getting, I've seen people, you know, they're just new saved and they go to a church where they don't have any teaching or any training. And I've seen them out there, the Bible said Hallel is in the beauty of holiness. There's nothing seductive about a Hallel. It don't look like the cha-cha-cha. 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 That's about as wiggly as I'm getting. It don't look like that. A Hallel don't look like you just come out of that movie. I never watched it. I never watched it when I was a teenager and it was on Delta and I turned it on and I turned it off. John Travolta and it was big when my day was going on. Oh, what was that movie? Grease. Oh, yes, Grease. I clicked it on, I clicked it off. And I said, there's not enough education there, not enough mental knowledge in there for me to lower myself to watch something that's 
I wasn't going as greasy as that. <laughs> now, don't fall, all, don't fall over on the floor if you watched it 10 times. Oh, that's my favorite movie. <laughs> we just know where your head is now. Your brain's about that small. Oh, that hurt! We weren't allowed to go see that stuff, much less watch it. And here I am on a Delta flight, and I've already seen this one four times, that one five times. There's, there's very little you can watch. I've watched Aladdin out in how many times? And then this last one, finally, the angels in the outfield. That's a good one. Angels in the outfield. I just about cried. I just about cried. I wouldn't allow myself, but I was going. <laughs> <laughs> glory. glory. I said glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to give God praise. He said, so if you believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. This Hallel praise is not something you learned off that movie Greece. It's not something that points your hands in certain directions that look seductive. And we're men and we know exactly what you're talking about. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, well, that hole in this shouting, it looks crazy. I'm not trying to be on a dance floor tonight. I'm just giving my God a Hallel praise. And that's the first thing that, that was the first instruction. You know what followed it? He said, I want you to praise him with Hallel in the beauty of holiness. And as they went out, as they went out before the army, and he says, I want you to praise the Lord. That means as they were going out before they went out, they were bouncing around in Hallel and they were carrying on. But when they got ready to face the army, he said, I want you to praise the Lord. That word praise is Toda. Toda is a lifted up of hand. That means victory. That means you're walking right straight to it. Cancer, I'm lifting up my hands. Uh, marriage problems, I'm lifting up my hands. Uh, financial problems, uh, I'm lifting up my hands. Uh, $18 million church, uh, I'm lifting up my hands. Uh, I said $18 million church, uh, I'm lifting up my hands. Uh, I'm facing the biggest uh, obstacle I've ever faced uh, and since I was a child. Uh, I've never faced a mountain this high. I've never faced any kind of miracle that I ever needed uh, of this magnitude. Uh, and this is something uh, that's totally out of my jurisdiction. I know I can't do it, but I know I got a God that can. And because I believe his prophets and because I believe the Lord, I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm telling you, Hallel just wakes up your body. But once your body has been awakened, then your spirit wakes up and your spirit throws those hands up and says, I shall overcome. I shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. And they begin to lift their hands and say, His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Come on, let's practice. His mercy endureth forever. Oh, His mercy. One more time, His mercy. And that means it goes a little deeper. And when they begin to sing and to praise, it went from Hallel, waking up your body. Get out of that bed. Get off of that seat. Get up these lazy hands that are hanging down. You know, the enemy's telling me, he said, you should have never told people they had an empty head for watching Greece. <laughs> Let's take a vote. Did the devil tell me that? 
A vote is yes, the devil did tell you that. Oh, looks like I'm outvoted tonight. Isn't that something you can't even preach without the enemy coming back to your head? If I offended you, I'm so sorry. But for me, it was empty headed to watch. So I turned it off. I never knew. In the 1970s, when I didn't watch TV in the 80s and 90s and so on, I never knew who shot JR, and I've never lost a night of sleep over it. And for those of you who don't know who JR is, look it up on Google and you might find out. All I can say is this it went from Hillel, a wake up praise, to a toda, a lifting up of hands, a confident praise, a praise that says, I don't know how, but I know he's going to make a way. This is my victory. My victory is not in my weaponry. My victory is not in the amount of army that I have. My victory is not in my past success, but my victory is the Lord shall go before me, and I need not fight in this battle. That's why the Bible said, Lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. It's God's will for you to face the devil with full confidence, 100% that God's going to see you through, that this thing will not exterminate you. The devil doesn't have the final word. It is God's victory that works through us. So it went from Hallel, Hallel, a wake up praise, to a Toda, a victory praise, to Tehillah, a supernatural praise. Now, I'm not from the Middle East. I made my first trip to Israel. Lebanon, Syria. I was actually in Greece and France too. When in 1972, I was in nine different countries before I was 20. I'm not from the Middle East. Every culture has its own spiritual, supernatural sound. In the Middle East, the Tehillah would be a sound that says all of the praise words in that cultural sound. So if David was here tonight, he would say, I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will lift my hands, I will bless his name, I will bless his name, he is my fortress, he is my healer, he is my if you all think you can find a Tehill apart, try it. Every kind of thought you could think, and this is what it sounded like. They'd already went from Hillel. They'd already shook their physical body and said, body, you line up. You're not going to control what happens in this day. They went from Hillel to a Toda, which is a lifted up of hands of total confidence in God and total submission to Him. And then it slipped into Hillah. That is a song praise. You are my shepherd. You make me to lie down. You'll never make a sound till you pick up the microphone. You lead me beside still waters. You fill my cup till it overflows. You are my joy. Come on, help them out up there. 
Come on. Somebody said, well, I don't know what to say. Think of something. You are the Lamb of God. You paid the price on Calvary. You back there running the sound. Make sure this congregation gets picked up. And thank God when you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. All the works, those supernatural words of Yahashen Amon Rata Amadaya. Yira Mahara Kandra Seno Lodorere. Something inside of them that we don't know. Some of you are never going to get out of your rut. You're never going to get the victory you need until you learn how to allow, until you learn how to tota, and until you learn how to tehilla. Oh! and give God a shout hallelujah now I'm a little boy I'm a little boy my great great grandmother receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost 1906 she comes from a geographic area called Appalachia the Appalachian mountains the Appalachian people are a people of Scottish Irish descent who intermarried with the Native American and the African the runaway slave made his refuge in the mountains many of the runaway slaves married into the Appalachian mountains and a sound developed, a sound that came out of the Cane Ridge Revival, 
a sound that came out of the first great awakening a sound that the old regular Baptists still have a sound that the old primitive Baptists still have and the separate Baptists a sound that the Appalachian Church of Christ which was born out of the Cane Ridge Revival that some of them in the deep dark coal mining camps of eastern Kentucky they still have that sound so when I grew up I never heard this Middle Eastern sound that came to me through the Holy Ghost as I began to praise God I would go from dimension to dimension and the first time I heard myself given this Middle Eastern sound the sound of Abraham Isaac and Jacob it sounded foreign to my mind but there was such a release and I would switch from Appalachian culture to Hebrew, from Hebrew to Appalachian because there's sometimes they overweave one another. Sometimes they connect and the African sounds come out. Hallelujah. And the Native American sounds come out. So when I was a little boy, if Harley Hensley was living tonight, you would hear Brother Harley Hensley get up and do things like this. Oh God, children, I'm here to tell you. And they'd have a hack in there. Ha. My God is a healing God. Ha. And the church would say, oh, that's right, Brother Hensley. He had said, Jesus died for my sins. And somebody would say, Amen. Amen. They would get, we didn't have an organ, but their voices would begin to get in this mysterious Tehillah, this strange Tehillah that said, He's my rock in a weary land. He's my comfort in the time of trouble. He's the joy of my salvation. He's the ruler of every nation. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Come on, come on, let that praise of your culture come out. He woke me up this morning, yes. He's my joy, yes. He's my strength, yes. He's the lily of my valley. He's the bright in the morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the joy of my salvation. And you know what's great? I can be an Appalachian and switch right over. He's my joy, oh. He's my joy. He's my savior. All I'm telling you is this, that the praise is mysterious. It doesn't make sense to the natural mind. It'll never make sense to this world system. How that you can face your adversary, face your problem, face your situation, and all at once God calls a praise to arise up inside of you. That there's no demon in hell that can come against you and some of you you need to improve on your level of praise your victory is determined by your level of praise to the finished work of Calvary it's the blood that has fought the battle it's the cross that has won the victory it is the sacrificial offering of Christ that has given us everything but it's my praise that causes the blood to take effect on every evil adversary that has come knocking at my door hallelujah Well, it's Easter celebration. Let's give God about 15 seconds of Hallel. Pour it on, brothers. Not too fast. Yeah.
said, Pop, praise. I said, Lord, praise. Come on, you got 10 more seconds. I want you to give God on this Easter Sunday the greatest praise you can give Him. joy it is to be 50 years old to be 40 years old to be 60 years old I'd like to go back to any of those I can't help it I'm 68 but I feel a 40 year old place getting ready to touch me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
to praise God for somebody else's freedom. I don't know if it's perversion. I don't know if it's porno. I don't know if it's alcohol. I don't know if it's inferiority. I don't know if it's a, a spirit of oppression. I don't know what this devil is. But I'm telling you right now, there's one more devil going out. Going out. They shall cast out devils. Pray him through. This voice says, I want to get saved. If you need to get saved tonight, this altar's open. If you need to surrender to your life to the Lord, this altar is open. Glory. Oh, praise Him. 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 Something happened. Just say, God, teach me, teach me, teach me how to praise you, how to praise you. Jesus name, Bohosha. Jesus. Take me to another level of praise. You see, these things are not in the scripture just to have a good story. They're to teach us. I stepped from Hillel to Toda. That means I've given out. There's nothing left I can do. But Toda will shift you into Tahila. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve Bachne Ashlava Kosha Ikra Bahashandalabaya Boshne, for you said, you've said in your heart, you've said in your heart, that's not my personality. I cannot step into that level of praise. But you speak to me. And you pray to me and you say, God, I need your help. Now I speak to you. Your help 
is in the development of your praise that the trying of your faith may be found under praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, whoever it is that's asked you for help, you've given us an answer. Our help is in the development of our praise. I'm going to tell you something. You won't take your money to the celestial city. They don't need it. The streets are paved with gold. You won't take prayer to the celestial city. The time of praying will be over. You will not take faith to the celestial city because your faith will turn to sight. There's only one thing that you have right now that you are developing that you're going to take to the celestial city. And that's my praise. That's praise unto the Lord. Let's all say this prayer together. Repeat it after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, help me, Lord, to increase my prayer and develop my praise. Help me, God, to push down the restrictions of my flesh that I can release my spirit in liberty unto you in Jesus name now if that's how you feel tonight just lift your hands and say thank you Lord 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 the key of G the key of G Hallelujah. Come on up here, Issachar. Give me another verse of that song. Hallelujah. You know what? I had all intentions. I'm wore out, ate like a horse, and I had all intentions. I said, this service will surely be over by 20 to 8. I missed it. Just sing a verse. Hit that key of G so he can hear it. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands, from the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Jonah, is that too high for you? Come up and try it. I know you're a bass. Come on, keep the rhythm going. We're not stopping. We'll put the words up there. I love you, Lord. It's right up there. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head low I will sing of the goodness of God Out. I love your voice, so you have led me through the fire, hey! and in darkest nights, you are close like no other, I've known you as a father.
next time on Sweeter as the Days Go By in your key. It's been good. One more time before we dismiss, give God a great Easter celebration. Praise. <laughs> we'll see you Sunday morning, 1045 Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Hallelujah. Praise God. This coming Wednesday night, but the Dan Harris will be here. I have to fly to San Antonio, Texas, but I'll be back. I'm flying down Wednesday night, flying right back. Praise the Lord. Shake hands, be friendly, or smile and be friendly. Whatever you do and be friendly, just do it with all your heart. Hallelujah. We are so excited about the new sanctuary that's being built right now. And I have just completed my very first project with Jimmy Swagger Ministries and the first thousand copies, Brother and Sister Swagger, are letting me be able to offer this and I'm going to do it in honor of them. The very first thousand copies are going to go for the promotion of our new sanctuary. We're gonna be giving you information how that you can be a part of this great, wonderful project to honor Brother and Sister Swaggered, and we get to build the new sanctuary also. To join in with Pastor Bates and be one of the 1,000 families to donate at least $100 or more in honor of Brother and Sister Swaggered for the building of the new sanctuary, visit TommyBates.com, text JSM to 859-359-3997, or call 859-356-8851. In appreciation of your gift, we'll send you Pastor Tom's new CD, I'm Getting Back Up. This is a limited time offer, so donate today.